Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In this short video, I wanted to show you guys how to do a quick and easy composite in After Effects. I know I'm starting to release new content on this channel. However, I wanted to still keep some After Effects content for those of you out there that aren't able to use Nuke or don't have access to Nuke. So here's a quick little CG composite tutorial that I decided to do. This is just using a 2D AOV passes from Arnold's, uh, rendered in Maya using Arnold's. I basically got this chair EXR, uh, which has AOVs in it. We'll take a look at what that looks like here in just a few moments, but this is the chair. I also went in and rendered out this BG for us so that we can use. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, to get started, the first thing I want to do is I want to set my uh, color management here. So to get started, I want to go down here to color settings. So click on the uh, options, the project settings here. Now, by default, uh, you may not have sRGB uh, selected. So make sure you come down here, make sure you have sRGB with the IEEC profile that's uh, with a gamma curve of 2.1. You can see this number right here at the end. If you don't know where this is, you could just click on this and it should show up here towards the top right here, sRGB. For uh, the bit depth, we're gonna use 32 bits. Uh, in another video on my channel, I will explain how this actually works. And make sure you linearize your color working space. The next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna come over here to the AOV, right click, interpret footage, main. Go to the color settings. And I want to switch this to interpret as linear light. I want this on. Even though I did render in 32 bits per channel in Arnold, it's just a best practice to switch this to on. Override media color space. We don't really need to override it because we've already set it properly and I'm just gonna hit okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new composition by just clicking and dragging this chair down and I'm gonna drag this BG layer below it and you'll take a look just right off the bat. This looks like it's actually composited in pretty nicely, but there are some things that I wanna do to split this up so that we can get a better looking chair. The first thing I wanna do is I want to name this layer right here, uh, base. That's just for me down the line. Let's go ahead and hide the BG for right now. First thing I'm gonna do is I wanna set up my mat layers first. So I wanna come in here, we're gonna call this chair mat. And I'm gonna hit control space bar to bring up FX console. If you don't have that, check it out. I'm putting a link in the description. It's a free plugin from Video Copilot. And I'm gonna type in crypto mat. And uh, you'll see that um, out of Arnold, I rendered out this crypto mat. It just has two assets to it. So I'm just gonna click the chair so we have that mat. I'm gonna come down here and sit matted only. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is just turn that layer off. And the next thing I want to do is I want to switch this track mat to chair mat and switch it to from alpha mat to luma by clicking on the first box. And now what I will have is I will have knocked out that shadow. And now we're ready to start compositing these assets together. So I'm going to duplicate the base layer and hide this bottom one. And we're going to call this one first diffuse direct. And uh, the way we like to render in Arnold for the most part is to split up our diffuses into direct and indirects, our speculars into direct and indirects. And in this case, I don't have a lot of passes, so this will be a very easy tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my extractor using the FX console again, and a control space bar. We'll come up here and we'll start with that diffuse direct. And then I'm gonna duplicate that layer and we'll call this diffuse indirect. And I will come up here and go to diffuse indirect. Okay. Now you'll notice it goes really, really dark and has this weird edge happening, and that's because of uh, we're not we don't have our blend mode operation up, and we're using the alpha channel information from this chair mat. So what I'm going to do now is on this diffuse indirect, we'll come over here to the blend mode, and I'm going to switch this to add. Now you will see that what's going to happen, not a whole lot's going to change, but in the areas where we have positive values, it's going to add those values on top of what we had below. And so that we can keep going from here, and I can actually duplicate this layer now and call this specular direct. And we can just switch this to specular direct, and it'll do the same. Duplicate that layer, and we'll go specular indirect, call that specular indirect. And uh, now we have our four main passes in. Um, we have one more that I want to use, but this next one I actually do not want. I'm going to duplicate the base layer, and I actually do not want a track map. And we're going to call this AO. Now, I went in and I rendered out a AO AOV here. I've moved this to the top just to show you how this works well, at the bottom. Uh, you will see that um, it, it looks like a clay render, and it actually brings in a lot of the shadow information here. Now, since this is white, um, albeit a little bit noisy, I can actually come down here and use multiply. 
And what multiply will do will allow me to add just a little bit of depth to this chair. Now it's a little bit on the extreme side. And uh, I actually probably want to modify this a little bit. So we're going to take a look at probably one of our darker areas here. Uh, look at the info tab up here in the upper right hand corner and we'll see we have 0 0.0037 and if we look at the darkest area of my chair which is probably about right here 0 0.0029 so it's a little too dark so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lower this opacity until I get something that I feel lines up well okay it's a little bit above that's okay I can alter that later Let's go ahead and bring the shadows back. To do that, I'm gonna take the base layer here again. We're gonna go ahead and turn off the track mat and I'm going to add that extractor again. Let's call this shadow mat. And I'm just simply gonna come up here to the shadow mask, turn this on, pull this to the top. We're gonna to right click, new adjustment layer. Let's call this shadows and take this right above the BG. Let's go ahead and switch this to shadow matte. And I could probably leave this one on alpha since the shadow comes in with an alpha, but I'll show you guys the difference here. There's really no difference. And then I'm gonna do an exposure and we'll just lower this bad boy down and you'll see we now have control over our shadows. And there they are, okay? And again, there's no real change. I mean, you get a little bit of a, like a, a multiplied change here. I actually do like using the Luma though because it protects the edges here. And at this point, we pretty much have our chair asset in. As a compositor, you would come in and start to manipulate these to start to match values. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty close. Uh, I'm not going to match the saturation values here. I think this chair um, is by default should be a, a little bit um, desaturated. It looks like an older chair, like someone took an older chair and put it in here. Um, but there are a few things that we can do to blend. The first thing first, I'm gonna grab a new adjustment layer. We'll call this uh, a grade. And uh, take this, and I'm actually gonna notch it right above the AO. We're gonna put a chair mat on it, and we'll switch that to the Luma mat option. And we'll do a curves first. Um, and you could do this by just taking a look at the darkest areas of your of your plate, right? So we know this over here is like really, really dark, 0 0.04, we saw a 0.3 over there. Um, and then if we come over here, you know, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, okay. So we want to drop these a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to zoom in on this curves, come over here, and just drag that over just a little bit, not too far, just a little bit. You can see it's starting to crunch those values. Now, oh, I went too far there, so let's just go even slow less. It's really starting to crunch those values there, so... Okay, uh, and then what we could do now is grab the highlights. Um, obviously, we don't have the sunlight really hitting this, but uh, what we could do is just say, hey, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.7. We can see over here, the brightest parts are nowhere near that. So I can just kind of eyeball it here because we don't really have direct sunlight hitting the chair. So I'm just gonna move this over. Don't wanna go too far, just a little bit over. Okay, a lot more than the black, of course. And then I'm going to take the midtones here just to adjust accordingly. Okay, so there we go. So now we have the chair. The goal is to try and get it to look like it sits in the plate a little bit better. And that looks good. Now, one thing to notice, this is an HDR uh, background. It actually is very clean. There's actually not a lot of noise on it. Um, so I'm not really going to touch the noise, but in the future, you probably are going to want to add the green at this stage of the game. And now we have our CG chair composite into a photograph. If this video helped you out, let me know in the comments below. I wanted to do this really quickly because I did get a request on how to do CG compositing in After Effects. I like to post a lot of VFX tutorials. And I'm actually working on an in-depth process starting from scratch where we will create a CG shot starting in Maya. We'll actually animate, we'll go ahead and texture and shade. We'll also render it and then we'll composite it in post and nuke. I'm working on a series of videos for that here coming out in the future. And if you're interested in that, you're gonna definitely wanna hit subscribe and smash that bell icon so that you know when those videos go live. Also, feel free to check out my website. I'm starting to update my website with more pieces from my portfolio and more information, including blog posts coming out in the future. Definitely follow me here, Instagram, and on my website. And if you have any questions, don't ever hesitate to ask. 
And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.